Hello. So a lot of you are getting ready to get into this running season because it's getting a little warm outside. Races are becoming way more appealing and there are more races opening up for in-person involvement, which is amazing because I'm super excited to be doing my first half marathon in just a couple weeks in person since um, before the pandemic. Really, 2019 was my last run. So I'm super excited to um, get to do one. It's going to be a small race. You know, got to bring your own fluids and things like that so that it can stay, you know, COVID safe. But it's super exciting. And I know a lot of you have or will be participating in half marathons. And some of you or full marathons or ultras or whatever it is that you like to do. But... Some of you will be doing your very first half marathon or full marathon or ultra coming up because the pandemic brought about a lot of new runners who are coming into doing races. So today we're going to talk about some tips on how to get you started off on the right foot for your first half marathon. So stay tuned. You do not want to miss this. <music> Hey, and welcome to Temple Running with MJ Smith. I am MJ Smith. And today, as I mentioned in the intro, we are going to talk about first half marathon tips. You can use these tips for any distance, but they are very much, you know, focused on the half marathon distance because that is my favorite distance. That is the distance that I have done the most of. I've done more half marathons than I've done 5Ks and 10Ks. So I love the distance. I've done 46 half marathons. So I have lots of info to give you if you are going to be going into your first race. So let's just go ahead and get into it. So my first tip for you is to talk about training. If you are already up to running five miles or so, and you are looking to run a half marathon, you could probably get away with about a 10 to 12 week training plan to get you up to that distance. If you are starting from the couch to half marathon, you're going to need about at least 16 weeks and possibly more, depending on how fast your body adapts to running. So if you were a previous runner and you're coming back to running, you'll probably can get it done in 16 weeks. If this is your first time really getting out there, um, it may take a little longer. So you just have to gauge it. If you're not ready, then you're not ready. I would not put my training plan right up on the race because you need to make sure that if you need to give yourself extra time that you can actually get it done in time for your race. So I'm gonna put a training plan in the description below that you can try out. It's a basic one, but you need to be smart and make sure you conform it for what works for you. Make it longer, make it shorter, depending on where you are in your running journey. And only you can gauge that. Be honest with yourself on where you need to start so that you can get to where you wanna end up. So a lot of people who are getting into running, they follow other runners and they see the time that they're running and they try to gauge their process, their progress, comparing it to those who they see on social media or, you know, wherever they might or just a runner that they know. You have to run your own race. You've probably seen this tip in multiple videos and I, it's kind of putting emphasis on what I just said when I talked about adjusting the training plan to fit you. You need to run your own race. So when you set time goals for your first half marathon, if you choose to do that, you don't have to do it. You can just get out there and run and just say, I'm going to get the best time that I can get no matter what it is. But goals does make it fun. But if you're going to set a goal, I would set three levels of goals. Like you could say, if I get, you know, this number, I would feel, oh my gosh, that is the, the ultimate level. I would be so proud of myself if I got that. But if I got this level, I'd still be really happy with that. And if I got this level, you know, it's just great that I finished and I got through my first half marathon. Give me my medal. And, um, 
and and carry on and, you know, just try to do better or reach some higher goals on your next one. But the three tier goal uh, situation is not so you can be disappointed if you don't make it those first two tiers. It's so that you have a baseline and a middle ground and a high ground in which to base your um, your accomplishment on. And regardless, please understand you crossing that finish line is the accomplishment. It is not how fast you ran. So just know that your medal looks just like that person who crossed the finish line first. You finished. So be proud of yourself no matter what your time is. But if you want to set goals, if you're like me and you're a, a numbers person, you want some credit for something, just make sure you give yourself enough wiggle room that you won't be disappointed. So the next tip I'm going to give you is fuel. You will need fuel to get through this race. And you'll probably discover that on your training runs. If you're training properly, your body only has a few hours of carbs to burn, period. Like it can only store that much. So you will feel like you're getting the court low <laughs> if you don't um, take something. Some people can get through a full half marathon and not take anything. But I think you feel better when you give your body the fuel that you need to run. So my tip for eating before you have marathon is start carb loading two to three days before. And carb loading sounds heavy, but I don't mean it in a heavy way. Carb loading just means start intaking some carbs. You know, if you're going to have you know, a meal and you can add a little more carbs to your plate, then do that and do that two to three days out. It doesn't mean have pasta and potatoes and bread for three days straight. Just that, you know, it just means be conscious of adding um, more carbs to your diet. And I talk about why carbs are so important in my video about carbs. And I talk about how to fuel and what to use to fuel your body before during and after a race in um, another video that's on this channel. So go and check those out. I'll try to um, make sure I flag them here. Your body can only store about an hour worth of carbs. And most people are not gonna be done with a half marathon in an hour. So you need to make sure that you fuel properly during the race so that you can keep feeling your best. There are many options. I talk about it in my video about fueling. There's natural stuff. There is stuff that you can buy that's already, you know, completely put together to give you your maximum performance. Whatever you choose, just make sure it's something that you definitely use during training so that you know that it works for you. During race day is not the time for anything new. I say it again. During race day is not the time for anything new. Okay. So make sure that you try out all your fuel sources that you think you might want to try during your training run. One of the tips I would give you on fueling is if you're doing an in-person race, they usually have a fuel station between four and seven miles. They're going to have a fuel station somewhere in there. And if you want to try the fuel that they're handing out so you can carry less on you, they usually do put on the website what they're going to provide you. If you want to go try it, go and buy one, try it during a training run, and then you can say, I'm good. They're going to have what I need. And then you can carry less on you. But be sure to try it during a training run. Um, don't just go and get it and take it and you've never had it before. Also, if you um, don't get a chance to try it, but you want to try it later, hey, I just grabbed mine put it in my pouch and I try it later on a training run. But you do not need to try anything new on race day, including the fuel source that they give you on the route. Another tip to give you is be sure to hydrate. Now with COVID, they're going to have, like I said, they're, they're cutting off a lot of their water stations because normally there are people there to hand you water and they pour it into cups. And so I guess that's just a little too much contact for the current environment we are in. But I make it a rule. I stop at every water station and I grab one of those little cups because most of them only have this much water in it anyway. But that little bit of water is probably what my body needs to get to that next hydration station. Even if I fully hydrated before I started the race, you get your, your gas goes down. 
So you need to make sure you keep putting a little bit more back in there. So even if you stop for just a shot of water, go ahead and get that shot of water. And um, if you want to use it as an opportunity to walk for a few seconds, that's okay too, or a few minutes if that's what you need to do. Really, the next tip is that it is okay to walk. Just because you're in this race and all these people are running around you and you feel like you aren't moving with the group if you're not running, do not let trying to keep up with those people out there make it where it's hard for you to get to the finish line. If you need to stop and walk, it's okay. You're still a runner. You're still a half marathoner. You just need to take a moment for yourself and you will see there are other people out there who will be taking their time. So don't let those elite runners and uh, people who this is their hundredth half marathon make you feel like you cannot take a walk if you need to during the race. Um, and like I said, water stations is a good milestone to say, I just got to make it to the next water station and then I get a 30 second walk break or a one minute walk break or whatever it is that you want to calculate. And you can kind of put that into your training so that you know you have so far to run before you get to walk. One of the things I do, um, is I like to thank the people who are helping with the race. Um, a lot of times the folks helping with the race get up really early in the morning just to get out there and help set up and it's all charity. They're not getting paid. Um, and when I say charity, I mean, because most races, um, that I do have been, um, some have been charitable causes. Some of them are just for profit races, right? Um, and some of those people do get paid, but usually they need way more people than they have on their staff, even for those races. And there are people who come out and just give their time to try to um, make your race comfortable for you. Make sure you have the fuel that, that you need, the motivation you need, because they're a cheering squad as well. Um, so make sure you take the time to thank them for coming out. I'm the person who thanks the bus driver before I get off the bus. I'm the person who thanks the security at my building. I just think it's important that you thank the people who serve around you to help to keep you safe and help to keep you comfortable. I just think it's the right thing to do. So if you um, get a moment, you make some eye contact, you get a whoop from a volunteer, just make sure you give them a thank you. I am sure it goes a long way with them. And the last thing I'm going to touch on is I know that at some points in the race, you might hit a wall and um, you might have experienced this in your training runs already. It happens. It can happen. It's happened to me. I mean, I had already run like 30 plus half marathons and I hit I ran one the very weekend after I had a PR in another one. And I was like, what is wrong with me today? Some days it's just a rough day. Okay. And you might have experienced this in training. You're just like, what is wrong with me today? Um, and that day sometimes can fall on your race day. So don't be disappointed. Just do what you can to try to pull yourself out of the mental funk. If it's a physical funk, you want to pay it a little more attention because you don't want to go out there and get injured. But if it's just mental, you know, get you a mantra that, you know, you tell yourself when you need to get, get going, you know, let's go, let's go. You got this, you know, um, I like to say I could do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Whatever you have to say to get your mind in gear so that you can finish that race, then you need to have that prepared. So just think about what motivates you. Keep that in your back pocket in case you need it. I hope you don't. But in case you do, keep that in your back pocket. So if that wall tries to come your way, you'll be ready with reinforcements to knock it down. So that's all I have for you today. Besides making sure that you're trying no new gear, that your clothes are comfortable, that you have the right shoes, charge your watch, charge your headphones if you wear them. Just make sure you have everything you need. So on the morning of your race, you're on, you are not all, you can be focused because you want to be focused and you want to enjoy this moment. Your first race is a big deal. And so um, let's just make sure we are fully prepared so that none of this stuff can keep us from crossing that finish line with the biggest joy that you very much deserve because you put in the work. So if you haven't already, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button 
and also give this video a like and hit the bell so that you will be notified when I upload new videos. I upload at least once a week and you don't want to miss any of the new content I put out. So make sure you hit that bell. Also, if you aren't already, please go and follow my running blog. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And I love to post my run journey there. I post on a regular basis through the week and I like to follow some of your run journeys as well. So please check me out there. So that's all I have for you today. I just wanna thank you for every moment, every second, every minute, every, ooh, if you spend hours with me, I definitely appreciate it. <laughs> But I just want to thank you for all the time you spend on this channel. I appreciate you so much. And until next time, are you in?